Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai Ba Hashem Rechach Kadash. Yahweh in the name of Heavenly Father, which means He, do, he exists, He is. All right. Ba Hashem Ba In Ha Da Shem Name Yahweh Shai, the name of God's Son, meaning He delivers, He saves. Rechach Holy Spirit. Double honors to our elders and apostles, the great most of the world, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom, and above all, back at it with another lesson of the spirit and power of the Hal Bashmar Shai. Well, when this video is edifying, and um, and I just wanted to touch on the little spiritual aspect I was meditating on, man. This doctrine of ours is from heaven, this is a heavenly doctrine. This, this doctrine is not of earth, this is not of the will of man. And that's why you see the fruit coming from within the movement of the doctrine of Yahweh Bashmar Shai. Because this work is not of man, that's why it is yet to come to naught. And I'll actually go ahead and get that real quick. Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone, for if this counsel or this word be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of Yahweh Bashmel Shai, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against Yahweh Bashmel Shai. That's right. <clears throat> and the same doctrine that the apostles were pushing back then is the same doctrine we're pushing now to our people in these times. Like you should say, things were in the fourth time, we're in for our learning. And this is the gospel that the Lord has anointed us to preach, man, the good tidings. And this is a doctrine from the heavens. It's not a doctrine of man. That's why it is yet to come to naught, man. And soon people are going to realize and know that prophets have been among them when the words of Yahweh Bashmashai soon come to pass. Okay? Nonetheless, through the Spirit, I want to go ahead and get this precept. This is John 7. 16, it reads, Yahweh Shai answered them and he said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. That's right. And who is he that sent Yahweh Shai? The Heavenly Father, the Most High Yahweh. He sent his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, to die for the sins of the nation of Israel and to reconcile the entire creation back unto him. As well, you know, to raise us up as the sons of God. And to put our nation back in power, man. And to have, and for the most I have mercy upon us, you know, and to deliver us from death. The most I said Yahweh Shai. You see? So Yahweh Shai said it. This isn't his doctrine, it's the doc it's the most high's doctrine. Okay. John seven and seventeen, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. Right. If you are a true member of Yahweh Bashmel Shai, if you are a true sheep of Yahweh Bashmel Shai, you will know the doctrine, you will learn the doctrine. He will acknowledge the doctrine, like Trip Shay, my sheep hear my voice, you know, and a stranger they will not follow, like we paraphrase it. So it says, um, whether it be of the Most High, or whether I speak of myself, he that speaketh of himself, seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true and no unrighteousness is in him. That's right. So you got a lot of dudes, they come into this thing to seek their own glory. They come into the truth for their own ulterior motive, you know, or um, trying to basically come in, this, come in this truth through the back door, you know, get into the kingdom of heaven another way besides the truth and the spirit of Yahweh Bashmael Shah. They come into this truth for the wrong reasons, and a lot of people come into this truth for vain glory to be seen as men, you know, to feign themselves like they're just so holy on on social media, but in real life, you know, they're completely off, man. Just like Yahweh I spoke about the scribes and Pharisees. Scriptures also say, beware of the leaven of the scribes and Pharisees, which is talking about their doctrine. Okay, we have to be we have to be mindful. Of the doctrine of Yahweh Bashmel Shai, and have our mind focused on that. And uh, the doctrine of the Pharisees, a part of that doctrine, was hypocrisy, man. 
you know, because they would appear themselves to be righteous on the outside, but inwardly, like how I said, they're like sepulchers, man, with dead men's bones in it. You know, that's what a lot of people are now. But if you come in and do the will of your house, and that's your own will, then you will be a true witness. And it will be known that you are a true witness of the Lord. You know? This is uh, Revelation 14 and verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Right. And that's this truth, this truth, this gospel. Notice how it said that the angel was coming from heaven, man. I want to show you that the angels, all right, along with the Holy Spirit, okay, they suck with you through the Spirit of our Yahweh Shemashai. They suck with you and they give you understanding, okay, and they work on your mind to receive this knowledge. And this knowledge has been brought through the four corners of the earth, man. Okay, and there's plenty of scriptures where angels have supped with certain men of the Lord, and they were sent to give them wisdom, sent to give them skill, like they told Daniel, sent to give men understanding. All right, and there's there's a few scriptures also as well where it talks about how the angels work on the minds of kings, they work on the minds of the people, you know. The angels are ministering spirits, so part of their, their ministering duties is to give you the wisdom of understanding. But also to give you this true gospel. We're going to show you that it's a heavenly doctrine. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Matthew 24 and 14. And this gospel shall be preached in all the world. Okay. And that's what you're seeing. This gospel has been preached in all the world. Okay. And it's still being preached in all the world. For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. That's right. So, going to show you the backing up of Revelation 14 and 6. That's on the angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, unto every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Okay? So, this is a heavenly doctrine that's being spread amongst the four corners of the earth, man. And, like it tells you in, um, like we told, like it says in Matthew 24, man, this gospel is going to be spread amongst all the nations, man. Then shall the end come. And that's how we know we're at the end because, you know, the fact that this truth has been going out amongst the four corners of the globe, you've been seeing a lot of prophecies have been popping off since then. But Christianity, according to Esau, has been around for hundreds of years, yet, you know, no real change was really made. You know, pursuant to the righteousness and, and, and the prophecies of Yahweh Shemel Shai concerning the nation of Israel being restored, you know. And this is uh, Proverbs 4 and 2. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Right. So this isn't, that, that goes to show you that. It's Yahweh Bashmel Shai's doctrine. That's the doctrine. His law, his word, the scriptures. You want good doctrine? Don't forsake the scriptures, man. Matter of fact, let me get that precept. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of the Most High may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Right, but notice how it said it's profitable for doctrine, man. And what did it say? All skip, all scripture, man. All right, and notice how it said it's the inspiration of the Most High. I'm going to show you that this is a heavenly uh, doctrine, man. This is a heavenly calling. This isn't coming from mortal men. This is coming from the spirit of power. Yahweh by Shemir Let me get the precepts. Psalm 68 and verse 11. And the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. You see, so who gave the word? The Lord. The Lord is the one who gave the word. But he had a holy men publish it. Okay, you have these people ask us, a, you have people ask us a lot. Saying, you know, oh, who wrote that? Who wrote that? Uh, they, say, they say man wrote that da, 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 da. yeah man did write it but who inspired it and whose words was man men reciting reciting and writing down man the words of Yahweh Bashan Shai. this is 2nd Peter chapter 1 starting at verse uh, 19 
we have also a more sure word of prophecy, right? This, the scriptures, the prophecies in the scriptures is sure. It's a sure word. They already either have already came to pass or are in the process of coming to pass or is yet to come to pass, man. But it's of a surety that the prophecies will take place. They will happen. That is a fact. Because like I said, it's a sure word of prophecy, man. It says, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Right. So if you take heed to the words of the Yahweh, the prophecies of the Lord, that'll lead you into well-doing. Because it's a sure word of prophecy. It's like how, you know, you do stock trading. And you got the insiders, you got the insiders in the stock game, and they'll say, you know, invest in this stock, it's gonna blow up, so on and so forth. Well, it's the same thing in the spirit, pretty much. The Lord is telling us to invest in them, and it's gonna be a sure reward after that, man. You know, like the elder Yashawamba made a lesson the other day. Uh, this investment is about to hit, man. You know, the investment of the Lord it, it, it will pay off in due time. Okay, but that's why it's known as an investment. A lot of times investments. It's not an early payout or early reward. It takes time for that reward to build up. But when it hits, it hits, man. You know? So it says, we also have a more sure word of prophecy. Words, you, you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in the dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. And that's Yahweh Shai. He represents the day dawn and the day star, man. He's the light, you know? But nonetheless, verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, right? This isn't the will of man. This isn't the private interpretation of man, what man thinks it is. It's the will of Yahweh Shemashai, what the Lord says it is, man. Okay? Verse 21, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. You see? So that is how, you know, the, that is how the doctrine gets pushed forth. The Most High gives the word, the men of the Lord publish it, man, and they're moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay? And you got that, you got the, uh, like we read back in Revelation 14, how the angel got the doctrine in the heavens, the gospel. You know, so the angels help minister, help minister forth the word as well, man. They play a role in that as well. And all, at the end of the day, you know, Yahweh Shai, he substitute you, you know, who sends the angels to work on your mind to program you? You know what I'm saying? Like, so say he seals the instructions in man. I'm going to show you that this is not a man. This isn't a work of man. This is a work of Yahweh Bashmel Shah. This doctrine is from the heavens. It is not of earth. Okay, a lot of people get that mistaken. They think that what we're doing is something of mortal men, but it's really not. Okay, this is a uh, wisdom of Solomon nine. And uh, this is a prayer when King Solomon was asking the Most High for wisdom. But I'll start at uh, I'll start at verse ten. Wisdom of Solomon nine and ten. O send her out of thy holy heavens, and from the throne of thy glory, that being present she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. Right, and that's how, it's not scripture saying Baruch. Happy are you, Israel, for the things pleasing unto the Most High are made known unto us. We're to paraphrase it, man. And that's because we have this doctrine from the heavens, man. All right, when the when the Lord gave Moses the tablets of stone, he engraved it with the, what did it say? It was, it was graven by the finger of God, man. I want to show you what? That it was a heavenly writing, man. It was a heavenly doctrine being pushed. It wasn't a thing of man. Okay? Now it says... For she knoweth and understandeth all things, and she shall lead me soberly in my doings and preserve me in her power. So shall my works be acceptable, and then shall I judge thy people righteously and be worthy to sit in my father's seat. For what man is he that can know the counsel of the Most High, or who can think what the will of the Lord is? For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. For the corruptible body presses down the soul, and the earthly tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. Right. This flesh wears down your mind and your spirit, man. You know? Verse 16. Hardly do we guess or write at things that are upon earth. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. 
of the things that are in heaven who have searched out in thy counsel who have known who have known except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above right okay so that goes to show you that the Lord he has to send that Holy Spirit he has to give you that counsel he has to give you that doctrine from above I want to show you that it's a heavenly doctrine and counsel and wisdom knowledge and understanding verse 18 so for so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee and were saved through wisdom all right and that's talking about the wisdom of yahweh by shemel shai this is baruch 4 and uh verse 4 i'll start from verse 1 baruch 4 and 1 this is the book of the commandments of the most high and the law that endure forever all they that keep it shall come to life but such as leave it shall die Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. All right? Because this is the true enlightening. This is the true doctrine that will make your eyes enlightened. Okay? In a dark world. Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable to thee to a strange nation. Verse 4, here's the point. O Israel, happy are we. For things that are pleasing to the Most High are made known unto us. And what's that? The ways of Yahweh Bashmel Shah, the laws that you command the scriptures. That's made known unto us to be in the children of Israel. And that's pleasing to the Lord. That's what the Lord delights in. He delights in righteousness. He delights in taking heed to his word. Okay? And you got a lot of people who think that, you know, they got it all figured out. And, you know, they know better than the Most High. But absolutely not. This is Isaiah 55 and verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I'm going to show you that this is a heavenly doctrine. Like it says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, man. And the Lord said, his thoughts are not our thoughts. So you might think a way is right. Like, oh, Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death, man. So it goes to show you, if you truly want to be delivered from death, you got to take heed to the doctrine from on high. As Isaiah 32 and 15, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. Where is it from? From on high. Going to show you what? That is a heavenly doctrine and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest and behold i send the promise uh is another precept I'm going to show you that this truth is coming from on high luke 24 and 49 and behold i send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of jerusalem until ye be endowed with power from on high, right? And how do we have power? Because we know the judgments of Yahweh by Shemel Let me get the scripture real quick. Micah chapter 3, verse 8. But truly I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. That's right. So. That's how we have power, man. That's how we're endowed with power. Now, it's going to come to a point, too, where we get spiritual powers and we're going to be able to, uh, you know, do a lot of mighty things in the spirit. Okay? Like run super fast, be able to fly, break through walls, have basically superhuman capabilities, man. And a lot of brothers will be able to attain that on this side. You know? But if you have this truth and you understand it and you know this truth, Thoroughly, guess what? You have a form of spiritual power already. Micah 3 and 8. Okay, so they're going to say what? That this spirit, the power, is coming from on high, man. All right? It is given from Yahweh Bashmel Shai. And that's why when people, you know, they talk smack, they want to say this, they want to say that, they're not talking about men. They're talking about Yahweh Bashmel Shai. That's really what it is. You know, First Thessalonians 4 and 8. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but Yahweh Bashmel Shai, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Okay? 
So when you have the Lord's Holy Spirit upon you and people are laughing at you, making fun of you, or, you know, ridiculing you, persecuting you, feeling some type of way because you want to stand for a righteous standard, catching an attitude with you because you want to stand for a righteous standard, guess what, man? They're not despising mortal men. They're despising Yahweh by Shemel Shai, man. And that's what the Lord said. Don't fear their faces, you know, and, and basically to execute true judgment because, it, you know, fear not the face of man. Because at the end of the day, it ain't your words. It's Yahweh by Shemel Shai's words. It's not your judgments. It's the Lord's judgments, man. And now when we say it's not our judgment, all right, we're not, we're not making excuses. You know, we're not saying, oh, you know, that we don't agree with it, you know, because we do agree with it because the Heavenly Father, you know, established it. But nonetheless, it goes to show you that it's not of man when we say stuff like that. It's of the Most High. This is Deuteronomy 1 and 6 to 17, actually. Deuteronomy 1 and 17. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is the Most High's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. That's the point. And that's what Moses was saying to the children of Israel. But nonetheless, the point being what? You should not fear the face of man. So if anybody despises me for this word, guess what, man? Just know that they're despising a doctrine from the throne of the Most High, man. A doctrine from the heavens. A doctrine that is not of earth, man. That's why it says in Matthew 10 and 40, He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. You know, and there's another one in Luke that pretty much says the opposite, if I'm not mistaken. You know, if you don't receive the Heavenly Father, you don't receive Yahweh, or if you don't receive the truth, you don't receive Yahweh Shai. If you don't receive Yahweh Shai, you don't receive the Most High, man. You know, I'm roughly paraphrasing. So, <clears throat> that's really the point. This goes to show you that this doctrine is not of men. It is a heavenly calling. It is a heavenly doctrine. <clears throat> and, um... If you don't take heed to it, then ultimately you're not taking heed to the wisdom in Yahweh Bashmah Shai. And there's really no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And you can't put it in any way or other around. It's as plain as day. You know, if you can't see it, you can't see it. It is what it is. But that does not mean that it's still not the Lord's will, it's still not the Lord's doctrine. So that's the point. Lord will this video is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashmah Shai Bashmah Kakadash, double artist. To the elders and apostles, great most and every well, peace of us, and to the elect of Israel, Shalom, and above all.